Guys, they finally did it. The mob vote is dead. In case you've been living under a rock for the past few years, every so often Mojang would hold a mob vote for its Minecon live event. This put three mobs against each other, and the viewers got to vote on which one got added to the game. Unfortunately, Minecraft players are stupid and usually pick the worst one. There have been five mob votes in total, and each one got increasingly more controversial. That especially came to a head in 2023, where it felt like everyone was making videos about these things. People really need to get more original ideas- oh wait, that's my video. But why did so many people not like these things? I mean, they seem like fun events to bring the community together. Well, instead, it completely tore it apart because of the fact that the losers were never added to the game. So in response, Mojang has recently announced that the mob votes have officially come to an end. And amidst the celebration of this announcement, it got me thinking back on all the losers from previous years. There has been a total of 11 losers, not including the Bayam vote or the Chinese mob vote. Now Mojang has claimed that the losers will eventually be added to the game, but in the last seven years from the first mob vote in 2017, we have not seen a single one. No, the Bayam vote with the frog does not count, because that was not a mob vote. You guys can stop commenting that now. But now that the vote is officially over, I think they can finally fulfill this promise and go through these losers once again. Especially since they also announced they plan to do more small updates like the armored pause drop in the future. So with all that being said, I thought it'd be fun to rank all of the previous losers from the mob votes based on which ones I would like to see get added first. Essentially, you could think of this as me predicting how useful each of these mobs will be. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and let's jump right in. Alright, to kick us off, we've got possibly the easiest last place in my entire life. Coming from the 2021 mob vote, we have 11, The Glare. I think this might just be the single mob vote loser to receive the least amount of support. I mean, every single year, the community has basically been split three ways, but I genuinely do not remember many people being on The Glare's side at all. Embarrassing! But what about this guy made it so hated? Okay, well, not even hated, it was just boring. <laughs> According to the announcement video, the glare would be used to alert the player if an area is dark enough for mobs to spawn. It would fly around the room and get angry when it's too dark. Now on the surface, that may seem useful, right? Well, aside from being able to tell pretty easily if an area is too dark by simply using your eyes, Minecraft already has a feature to tell you exactly what blocks a mob can spawn on. If you press the F3 button, along with it giving out your entire docks, you'll be able to find a section talking about the light level of the block you're looking at. If that number is zero, mobs can spawn. This was in the game far before the glare was ever considered, so there's genuinely no reason to ever vote for this mob concept. No matter how it's implemented, it's almost for sure going to be much harder to use than the F3 screen. Genuinely, if every other mob in this video gets added except for the glare, I wouldn't be upset. Plus, it's also just got one of the lamest designs of the bunch, just being a leaf block with eyes thrown on. So for having what's an incredibly useless mechanic and a mediocre design, I think the glare is definitely my least favorite. 10, The Great Hunger. And here we have the first mob of the video that I actually voted for. So why is he lower than the other 2017 mobs? Well, to understand that, we've got to understand the context around the first mob vote. So what was the Great Hunger supposed to do? Well, according to Jeb, the Great Hunger would be able to sink into the ground and camouflage itself. Any mob or item that goes on top of its giant mouth would get bitten. That's one. I'm confident. Now, the reason I and many others actually ended up voting for this guy was because on top of this eating item's property, the Great Hunger was supposed to have enchanting abilities. But it wouldn't just be able to add enchantments, it could also remove them. So say you spent hours mining diamonds only to end up getting Bane of Arthropods on your sword. Instead of having a mental breakdown about how unlucky you were, you could now unenchant your items to try again. But then they added the grindstone in 1.14. Yeah, so considering they have since added a pretty simple way to unenchant things, there's really no reason to ever revisit the Great Hunger. Heck, it'd probably be quite annoying since it's a hostile mob. Imagine finally finishing all your gear just to step on this guy and lose all the enchantments. Also, it's worth noting that the three losers from the first mob vote have been confirmed to never come into the game, but I feel like I should include them in this video just for the sake of completion. 9. The Monster of the Ocean Depths Back to back on the 2017 vote, this time we have Mob A. This would be a hostile mob and it would use its tongue to drag people below the water in order to drown them. It would also propel itself forward using its mouth. And that's sadly all the info we got. No information on what it could maybe drop to be useful for the player. That made it pretty difficult to place, so I've just got to go off the concept of more hostile mobs underwater. Compared to all the other mobs coming up, that's not incredibly interesting for me. We already had the Drowned and Guardians for Ocean Monuments. Plus dolphins if you hit them, I guess, but how could you hurt such a majestic creature? Personally, I think that's plenty of danger for the water biomes. I don't really want to worry about suddenly drowning while swimming, so I think I'm perfectly fine if this guy doesn't come into the game. 8. The Moo Bloom Alright, taking a break from the first mob boat, we got one of our losers from the 2020 Vote. Now first off, I want to say that I do like how the Moo Boom looks visually. The yellow cow mixed with the dandelions on its head is very cute. Plus, if we could get different colors for all the different flowers, that would have been amazing. However, this is where we face a big problem. Mojang was extremely vague as to what the Moo Bloom actually did. Honestly, they were pretty vague for most of these guys. That made ranking them very fun. All they said about the Moo Bloom's functionality is that it's friends with bees. I tried looking on the wiki to see if they maybe announced some more features somewhere else, but nope, that's all they ever said. I'm sure this interaction with bees would have been useful for something, I just can't imagine what it 
it would have been. Maybe if a moo bloom and bee interacted, flowers would grow around the cow without requiring bone meal. I don't know, that's just the best I got. It makes total sense why the moo bloom lost during its year due to how big the info was. I do think the moo bloom is cute though, and if it could come in other flower colors, I think it could be a neat little addition. 7. The Rascal Coming from the 2022 vote, we have one of the most unique mobs in terms of functionality. According to the video, this guy isn't hostile, just a little mischievous. He would be found underground, and you'd have to play a game of hide and seek with him. If you managed to find the rascal three times, he would give you a prize. That sounds like it could be a really fun minigame, especially considering just how big Minecraft's caves can be. I can imagine it taking quite a while to find him hiding around. The only issue comes from what these prizes would actually consist of. If we're going to be spending a long time finding him, it's got to be something pretty worthwhile to distract us from potential diamonds and other ore. In the video, they did give at least one example on what it could give. An enchanted iron pickaxe. Yeah, so not really the most helpful drop, but I imagine there would be others as well. Though considering this was the year the sniffer won, I wouldn't get my hopes up for a wide variety of prizes. If it could give you an exclusive item that's useful, then I think the rascal could be a good addition. But again, due to the vagueness of the announcement, it's hard for me to bring this guy up much higher. 6. The Penguin Here we have one of our most recent losers as these guys came from the 2023 vote. This was a very tough year since I feel like they were all pretty solid choices. Plus this is the only year to have them be based on real life animals, and who doesn't love penguins? Now the reason I think the penguin got last place was because its ability was the least clear of the bunch. According to the video, penguins would be able to push boats to get some extra speed. Now that is a lot clearer than some of our previous entrants, but at the same time, that raises about a billion questions. First is the obvious, how much faster would it make the boats go? Is it like a Depth Strider 3 boost or Dolphin's Grace? Because that's a pretty big difference. One other important factor is if penguins would work on ice. One of the fastest travel methods in the game is using a boat on top of blue ice, which allows you to go 72.73 blocks per second. If a penguin could boost that even more, that'd be pretty dang useful. But also we have to think about how the penguin boost would work. Would the penguins be easy to transport across land? Because if you have to slowly drag it across pieces of land between water spots, then that could potentially lose all benefits of speed you got. Best case scenario, the penguin works on ice and teleports to you like wolves. But since we don't know if that's the case, I'm just gonna put this guy in the center of the list. 5. The Chillager And we're back to the hostile mobs, but I found this guy to be a bit more interesting. The Chillager comes from the 2020 vote and was actually the last time they ever had a hostile mob in any of these votes. I guess they did get a whole year to themselves in 2020, 2017, but it's kind of crazy that every other year just had passive mobs. Anyway, the Chillager would spawn on top of mountains and would be able to attack you with flying ice blocks. That sounds like it has the potential to be a really interesting fight, and since it only spawns on top of mountains, they're pretty avoidable in case you find them annoying. There is, however, a big problem holding the Chillager back from going higher, the fact that they once again didn't specify what this guy could draw. I imagine it'd be something worthwhile, but we sadly don't know for sure. I'm kind of going with the belief that it would be an exclusive and useful item due to how you have to go out of your way to find this guy, but since we can't quite confirm it, I think I'll have to keep the Chillager near the middle of my loser list for now. Okay, I lied, the name is Isolager, but Chillager is such a better name, come on. For the Hovering Inferno. And here we have the final mob from the 2017 vote. In fact, it's kind of funny how each of my top five in this list ended up coming from all the different years. I did not plan that at all. As you may expect, this guy would spawn in the nether alongside blazes on rare occasions. It's not clear if certain conditions would have to be met or if he could just jump scare you from a spawner. But what we do know is that the big plates hovering around the blaze would act as shields, which I imagine would make it quite difficult to actually hit and kill this guy. On top of that, Jeb said he would have some sort of super deadly shockwave attack and recommended players to have fire protection. So while it hasn't been fully confirmed if this guy would be a boss, it certainly sounds like he would be. Maybe not on the level of the Ender Dragon or Wither, but probably something close to the Elder Guardian. I think Minecraft could always use more boss fights, so I'd very much be on board to see this guy get added. In fact, he actually did get added into Minecraft Dungeons, which is what I've been showing as background footage. Unfortunately, just like the Chillager, we don't know what this guy would drop. That makes it harder to bring it up further on the list, but I'm again just choosing to believe that they'd make this boss drop worthwhile. 3. The Tough Golem This guy is our final mob from 2022, and it's got a really interesting functionality. First off, it could be used to display items by holding it out in front of them, which I just think would look great aesthetically, especially since they still refuse to let us give armor stands arms in Java survival. On top of being able to display items though, the tough golem will also be able to walk up and move around. Now that aspect could be a bit of a double-edged sword. While it may be cute in some cases to have little guys running around your base holding up items, if you just want them to be statues, then this aspect could be quite annoying. Personally though, I imagine they would make it so you could basically freeze the golem in a given spot, similar to sitting down a dog or something. If they don't do that, this guy would probably be a lot lower on the list since that that hurt its usage in builds, but with the assumption that that will come, I think the tough golem could be a really neat addition. 2. The Copper Golem Here we have our final mob from the 2021 vote, and I've just gotta say, it's probably got my favorite visual design of the bunch. He's just such a cute little guy, and I like that he can actually oxidize since he's made out of copper. That could make the Copper Golem a pretty good display piece, though freezing it for all eternity might be a little bit cool. If you do decide to keep it in the non-oxidized state, it'll actually be able to move around. When it's alive, its main functionality would be its ability to randomly press copper buttons. This could be used to create randomized 
risers and redstone systems. Not that that couldn't be done before, but this would be a cute way to do it too. But also observant listeners may have noticed that I said copper buttons. This is something we still don't have in the game, so if they were to add copper golems, these would have to come with them. I imagine these two would be able to oxidize, which can make them really nice ways to add details to builds. I also think it'd be pretty cool if the oxidization level changed how long the button stays pressed for, but that's purely speculation. They really did a good job clarifying a lot of what the copper golem could do and what might come with it, which I think helped it place extremely high on my list here. Also, I just want to say again, if Mojang were planning on adding mob boat losers, why didn't they have the tough and copper golem last update? You know, the one that added a ton of tough and copper blocks? Whatever, I guess. But for me, the single mob that I want to be in the game the most out of any of these losers is one, the crab. Yes, I'm still not over it. He is our final mob from the 2023 vote, and like I said, that was a pretty tough year. We ended up getting the armadillo instead, and while I still would have preferred the crab, I'm not upset by how the armadillo was added. The people on Hermitcraft made soccer out of it, I think that's funny. But what about the crab puts it at number one? Well, I just think they were the most clear about what it could do for us, and that use seems very good. The crab would spawn in mangrove swamps and would be able to drop its claw. Now, it's not clear if you have to kill the crab or do something like brush it, but regardless, what did this claw do for us? Well, this had the ability to extend players' reach while building. That is absolutely massive. I'm sure everyone has built something big and just wish they were able to reach a few more blocks around them. Well, with the crab claw, you'd be able to do just that in order to place blocks further away than before. This would significantly reduce how much time it takes to build something and how much scaffolding you need to build to reach higher up. Considering building is one of the game's main aspects, this is easily the most versatile ability any mob boat mob would give. And that's just looking at it on the super surface level. While we know it can extend reach for building, this might even work with mining and combat too. There's no guarantee of that, of course, but if it did work, this would be even bigger than it already is. You can mine further around you in search of ores, and you could keep mobs at more of a distance to avoid getting attacked. That would make the crab not only the most useful mob boat mob, but one of the most useful mobs in general. Even if it is just building though, I'd be more than satisfied. I really hope they stay true to their word about the losers eventually being added, because the crab and its claw is genuinely one of the features I want in the game the most. But anyways, that's it for this video. Are you a big white dolphin fan and hate me for not including the Chinese mob vote? Let me know in the comments. I'm happy that Mojang is listening to us and finally concluding this super controversial event. I do think they could have made it work if they actually added the losers and relatively quickly after they lost, but if they don't want to, then this is probably the best outcome. I am very much looking forward to seeing how they do these smaller updates in the future as well, and I hope they feature some of these losers. But before we end off completely here, I do want to say that I've just started channel memberships. Thank you so much to all the people who have already signed on. Their names are on screen right now. So big thank you to Seb, Gavin, Yanni the Duck, Thick Rib, Andres Valerio, Mogo Mogo Boat, Hippo the Potamus, Ratsy, Muskety Duskety, Wilbur, Golden Sand Slash 15, Stuffy Ant, Just Dex, Hezekiah, Conjack Pre, Keep, Frost, and Christian Flattery Sequel Edition. Anyone who signs up will not only get on this list at the end of every video, but they also get a preview of the first hour for my 200k special ranking every 2D Mario level. Again, thank you so much to those of you who have already signed up, the support really means a lot. But anyways, Dry Bones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time time.